Recently, a gentleman made a comment on one of my videos about why I didn't use the combine curve. And I do use the combine curve, but in a, we'll say, slightly unexpected fashion. Okay? So here I have my center curve, and then I have a combine curve. So this combine curve is basically I take my center curve, and I did an offset curve downward, because I do this quite a lot, right? I want things to be nice and concentric and look a certain way. And then I have my outside curve, and I did my combine to this guy. So when I click on my combine curve, you'll see there's my offset curve and my spline. Now what that gives me, let me go ahead and hide that surface. Let me hide this bridge curve. Now what that gave me is this curve. When I look at the poles, and I look at the knots on that, you'll see that it's a fairly complex curve. And if I take a look at the original curve, show poles, show knots, very simple and clean. If I look at this original curve, show poles and show knots, very simple and clean. Now, if I go in and look at this offset curve, right, I have a bit of complexity. Now notice the combine is even more complex Okay, because now it's you're combining the complexity of this curve, that offset curve, which is going to necessarily be more complex than the original. This is true for all CAD systems. There are ways to do smoothing on this, and all CAD systems do it. Um, and then, uh, but I left it as such with tolerances, you know, being the same and everything. And then did the combine. No. What I then proceeded to do is create a bridge curve on that combine. That bridge curve, you saw a moment ago, I had my deviation gauge it's less than a millimeter away. Okay, so it's very, very close. Now, if I do an analysis on the combine, let me turn these off, uh, or on the bridge, let me show you the poles and the knots. There's no knots. So it's basically tangent over here, it's tangent over here. I did some adjustments on the magnitudes, start and end magnitudes, and I got it to within less than a millimeter. And in most cases, this is going to be very acceptable. Okay? When I say very acceptable, I mean very, very acceptable. The deviation, the greatest amount of deviation, I is coming in from this view right over here. And um, what's happening is it's just, you know, kind of pulling away. Now, I could play around with the bridge and change it, maybe make it G2 on one side, you know, adding a bit more complexity to the curve. You can play around with it. But generally speaking, I can almost guarantee you that, if, especially on larger parts, this is going to be an allowable amount of deviation. So... This bridge curve now is far simpler mathematics-wise. So I'm going to go through, and now I have a surface. Okay, This surface is just a through curve. They did an extrusion, extruded it out, and you know somebody was talking about why I don't do this, so I'm just doing it now as part of the demo. But I seldom do this unless, you know, if it needs to be perfect across symmetry plane, I always design across symmetry plane. But if it just needs to be tangent or just smooth across it and it doesn't really matter, then it doesn't really matter. But uh, so I, I did it, and there it is. Now, this surface is made to that combine curve. And you'll note how complex it is. If I look at the inputs of said surface, see it's tangent across the midplane. Flow direction is not specified. It's present preserved shape with a parameter. If I turn off preserve shape, you'll notice it gets a bit more complex, believe it or not. If I go to arc length, you'll see even more complex again. Let's go parameter and preserve shape. Patch type, I have it set to single. Construction set to normal. Okay, so that gave me the simplest surface for this here. But it's still, in my estimation, more complex than I want it to be. Now, if I go in, and I'm going to say combine curve, I'm going to right mouse click on it, I'm going to say replace. What do I want to replace it with? I want to replace it with the bridge curve. I do not want to delete it, and select OK. As soon as I select OK, notice the surface that gets built. 
it is a much cleaner, much simpler, much more everything surface than the prior one. All right, now I'm gonna undo that. Let's do this, I'm gonna add some reflections to this now. And uh, we'll go to line images, we'll go to this guy. We'll make it ultra fine because we can. And then I wanna add additional lines. Let's see if we pick up anything changes. Now, if I come in here, do my replace once again, there's my combine, I'm gonna right mouse click on it, I'm gonna replace. What do I wanna replace it with? I wanna replace it with that bridge. Delete is turned off. Select OK. Okay, you saw the control points update a little bit. Maybe the lines updated a little bit. Let me undo that. Redo that. So there's not a great amount of difference between the two surfaces. Okay, the biggest difference is right down here. Right in this area where the deviation is at. So I'm going to undo that again and redo that. Undo, redo. So almost no change, right? It's practically imperceptible. You're not going to see it. And I have a much simpler surface there. And the nice thing about doing, again, stuff this fashion is if I come in here and say, okay, this offset curve, this has got to go down to 75. Everything updates, still simple, clean surface. Now I have a, a little bit more deviation, tenth of a mil more. And again, I could go in there and play around with my bridge to get it a little bit closer if need be. So again, I do use the combine curve sometimes. Sometimes I just, I can draw the curve that I want without having to have two curves and combine them. I understand why people do that. It's a very simple technique. It's very effective and it works wonderfully. But I find over the years, I've gotten really good with manipulating control points and I enjoy the control point manipulation. I don't wanna draw the extra curves. So I just put the curve in right where I need it. Now, if you still want this kind of control, this is kind of nice kind of control you can have. So I still have the extra curves. I've got the combine and I have my analysis set up so I can see what's going on with that bridge. But again, this gives me a very nice level of control because if I come in here and once again, let me just go down to 35. Everything updates, moves, processes very quickly because again, that surface is being processed to that curve. Again, if I make a modification to this guy, actually, let's do this here. Uh, parameters. I don't have the continuous update set up. Let me do that. Parameters, preferences. For my edit, let me just say edit parameter, update. Let me turn on continuous, all, select OK. So now you can see it updating live. Okay, now you see I have a very large deviation. So this is where I would definitely go, oh, wait a minute. You know what? Maybe I need to play around with my bridge a little bit. Okay. And just go back and forth until I get it right to where I want. Let's see here, one, one. Okay, now so I'm going to think in the opposite direction, a little bit too high up. There we go. And just go back and forth and play around with it in said fashion. Again, if I need to. Now, if I change this and say, all right, well, I want G2 continuity on one side, you'll notice I have an extra row of control points because it necessarily has to put that in. And... Um, you know, that's not bad if it gives you what you want. And again, I can play around with it. So now you can see, oh, I'm getting it really close once again for that said method. Okay. And again, this is a deviation 
that was is probably more than likely acceptable. Okay? It's more than likely that it's going to be acceptable. So if people want to get into the weeds with this stuff, which is fine. You're more than welcome to do what you want. But to be very honest, you know, if you're you know, you're doing some um, working off of a scan or clay or sections or whatever, you know, you again, you mentioned before, you need to select where you want the deviations to occur. You know, and it may be that the surface is spot on over here someplace, and then maybe the surface is spot on down here, and it begins to deviate in an area that it's going to be trimmed away, but it gives you much better highlights and simpler surfaces. And for me, that's a win. That's a win for everybody. Okay. These again, these these are the, these shapes that I put in to describe what it is I need. And um, I'm allowed to describe those shapes however I deem necessary to get the final surface. So if I deviate out here from this a little bit and from this a little bit <clears throat> across a big, broad, flat surface or what, whatever, and you can't notice it in this area, you saw me go back and forth with the undo, redo with the uh, reflections and so on and so forth. Again, this is just simply pulling away a little bit. Who cares? Really, honestly, in almost all instances, who cares? And if you need to go back and adjust it, it's a bridge. You have the parameters to go and adjust it. So that's why I use combine the way that I do, or sometimes I just don't. If I know that the theoretical is going to be very simple, it's going to be basically planar, because sometimes the theoretical can be planar, then I just use a three-point arc or a three-point spline and make basically makes it a conic, get it into position, and away I go.